Hi, it's Heather from Thicketworks, and today I'm playing with some faux rust effects and latex lace for this altered book cover. Lots of layers in this one, and one of the most important is created using Distress Oxide inks, and in this case, a shiny photo paper, just to create a cool background that we can then emboss and make really grungy with additional layers of pigments. Distress Oxide inks are really vivid on a glossy photo paper, but they're not terribly blendable. Here, I'm just covering the paper with a variety of colors, adding some water, and allowing the oxidization to take place. Once that initial layer of ink has dried, I'm going to be livening up that surface by adding splotches and splats of additional layers of oxides right over the top. This will help to conceal and merge together all those unblended areas on the original paper. And once it's dry, I'm just cutting it down so that it will fit into an embossing folder. This Cuddlebug embossing folder called Clockworks seems appropriate for the project that I have in mind. So I'm just going to crank these panels of Distress Oxide background papers right through the Sizzix Big Kick. That's pretty, but I think it needs a lot more interest. I'm going to hit the high points with Mixed Media Ink by Donna Salazar in the color Berries. It's kind of hard to find this ink these days, but I really, really love it. It's so thick, highly pigmented, slow drying, and rich. I like the way that do-it-yourself coffee stain can add richness, depth, and some shadowing effects without being overwhelming. It's pretty subtle once it dries, but it does increase the depth and richness of the finish. A few pools and splatters of coffee really help break up the surface and create another layer of interest. Good, I'm pretty happy with that result. I'll dry these panels and begin to add some metallics on the high points here. I'm reaching for Delicata ink in Golden Glitz and just applying it direct to the paper using the pad itself. This is a great way to control the ink distribution on an embossed surface so that it really only touches the high points. To frame these panels, I'm just drawing a sketchy line with Distress Stain in black soot right along the outer edges. To enliven the surface even more, I'm going to add splatters of bronzer from Heidi Swap in the color Shine line. I love this stuff. And that's it for this first set of embossed panels. Now I'm going to concentrate on creating a few more using regular smooth white cardstock. My goal here is a simple blended background panel that I can then run through the same embossing folder. The paper is a little warped from all of the moisture, but embossing will help to reduce that warping. Next, I'm going to add Walnut Stain Distress Oxide to the debossing side of the folder. So it will be the background that receives the pigment in this case. And to make it easier for the ink to transfer to this plain white cardstock, I'm going to mist the surface of the paper not the embossing folder, with just a small amount of water prior to embossing. My Big Kick needs repair, and so I run this through twice and get a bit of a duplicate shadow effect on the embossing, but that's all right. There are going to be enough layers over the top of this piece that it won't really matter. For this embossed panel, I'll be swiping spiced marmalade right over the top, hitting all of the high points with that rich orange color. Okay, so that's two more embossed panels ready for some metallics. And I'm reaching for Antique Brilliance and Fire Ruby and Aged Brass Metallic Wax. Aged Brass is something that I'm coming to rely on more and more. I just love the rich antique golden color that it gives. And it's so easy to apply gives a gorgeous shimmer. I am loving the dark 
metallic, almost brick red effect from this Fire Ruby Antique Brilliance Wax. I'll be framing these two panels with Black Soot Distress Stain, just like the previous panels. To break up that harsh border, I'm coming back in with the metallic waxes to soften the effect. I've decided to use the Fire Ruby panel on the back of this altered book cover. So I'm mapping out where I want it to be adhered and tracing that out with a pencil. To soften the transition between where the panel will appear and the background paper here, I'm using Walnut Stain Distress Stain to just sort of blend out that frame area. A smooth layer of Aileen's Tacky Glue is perfect for adhering these embossed panels to this altered book cover. I like to use a Bondo spreader as a burnisher to make sure that these embossed panels are firmly in place. And that's it for adding those panels to the front and back. This altered book will eventually become an art journal, so I want to dress up the end papers on both the front and rear covers. So I'm adding a border of walnut stain and then gluing down some cool scrapbook papers. Once the end papers at the front of the book have been completed like this, I'll open the back of the book up and repeat the process there. I'll now combine two of the cutoff pieces from this 12 by 12 scrapbook paper to make a nice end paper for the very front cover. I want to add some texture and interest to these inside pages, so I'm reaching for some do-it-yourself patina mixes. I'll provide a link below to the recipe and just spreading that through a stencil blending the colors together with a little cutoff card. It's important to wipe off and then wash your stencil surface right away when using the patina mixes. Now I'm just reaching for a different stencil and adding more texture and pigment with another blended area of patina mix. I'll continue to add texture and pigment through stencils until I've covered the entire page. Then, after drying the surface with a heat tool, I'll add in some do-it-yourself coffee stain. And to bring some brightness and a touch of glimmer to this surface, I'll be adding both aged brass in the metallic waxes line and mystic turquoise. This stuff is amazing. It's a gorgeous two-tone finish. When the light hits it from one direction, it's a rich brown, and from another direction, you get that gorgeous hint of blue. I'm loving the color shift effect from the antique brilliance waxes. Now that the end papers have been completed, I'm going to turn my attention again to the front of the book and reach for the Heidi Swap Color Shine in bronzer to create some gorgeous splatters and speckles everywhere that have just a hint of deep, rich gold to them. Yep, I'm liking the way this is coming together. I'm happy with the end papers and the stenciling and the base for the front and back covers, but I'm going to use a pit artist pin to emphasize the frame around each of these embossed panels. I'm liking that loose, grungy line around each of the panels. It's helping to create cohesion. The darkness of the spine, for example, was a little stark when compared with the rest of the cover, but now there's a little more harmony between the two areas. And this is the moment that I've been waiting for, adding the first piece of latex lace at the front leading edge of the cover. Aileen's Tacky Glue does a great job of adhering this stuff perfectly. A heat tool helps to speed up the drying time for the adhesive. When it's dry, I'm reaching for the metallic waxes again and applying them to the upper surface of the latex lace. Oh yeah, I am loving the shimmer and gleam and color shift from these waxes. Just gorgeous. 
I expect to handle this book cover quite a bit. So to ensure a perfect marriage between the latex lace and the cover itself, and to make sure that it will never lift and peel off, I'm adding a generous layer of triple thick gloss glaze that's going to make certain that everything stays put. And it's also a wonderful way to add bits of microbeads everywhere. While the triple thick is curing at the front edge of the book cover, I'm reaching for some do-it-yourself rust paste and grunging up the spine and corners a bit. And then I'm just baking that with a heat tool so that I can immediately add glimmer and gleam with more of the aged brass metallic wax. Yep, so far so good. I'm loving the grungy but elegant surface that we've created so far. Now it's time to reach for some more latex lace. Make sure to watch the video on how to create latex lace so that you can play with this stuff too. It is amazing. See how flexible it is and yet how detailed? It's perfect for wrapping around the spine of this book. Yep, we're just going to use tacky glue again. I'll put down a thick layer and then spread it out with a moistened brush so that it's relatively even everywhere. Then it's just a question of picking up the latex lace, putting it in place, and pressing it down. The latex lace is so detailed and yet so flexible that even after you've put it down, you can lift it up and adhere it even more firmly anywhere that it requires it. Allow the adhesive to set up for a few minutes and then if you like, you can come in and add a layer of do-it-yourself rust paste. I find that this is a great way to blend together all the different elements that are vying for our attention here and to vary the intensity of those large expanses of rust paste, I'm just adding dabs of Distress Stain in black soot and then dabbing into them with a wet brush to blend the color. After drying the surface with a heat tool, it's now possible to come back in with the metallic aged brass wax. I love the way this interacts with the do-it-yourself rust paste and with the latex lace. Gorgeous. Next, it's time to create a focal point for this altered book cover. To accomplish this, I'll be gluing down this Spellbinders Gilded Life medallion with 3D matte gel. This matte gel is an excellent choice for gluing down heavy, bulky items to a surface like this that is uneven and embossed. A damp brush is a great way to eliminate any of the squeeze out. I want to fill the bezel in the center of this medallion with triple thick and microbeads. These little spoons created for nail art are a great way to dispense small amounts of microbeads. A set of angled crosslock tweezers helps me to hold the little spoon with accuracy, and then I can use the other end of the tweezers to tap down that surface. Here I'm just adding a tiny cast embellishment below that medallion. This little plastic fleur-de-lis is going right over the top of those microbeads and triple thick. And as I press it into place, the triple thick erupts up through those apertures. So I'm just using a dampened brush to spread that around evenly. Triple thick is my adhesive of choice when adding flat-backed rhinestones. And I'll just be adding a few here to emphasize the focal. I expect this altered book cover to receive quite a bit of handling, so to embed the rhinestones and the focal point onto the surface, I'm coating everything with triple thick in a way that will marry the two surfaces together permanently. A heavy application of triple thick will have a blue tinge while it cures. I suggest leaving this overnight. 
once it's cured, the surface is incredibly sturdy and so tactile. The texture created by the latex lace coupled with the rust paste is just delicious. I'll probably end up adding even more embellishments to this altered book cover, but I was eager to share with you the process for adding latex lace and rust paste to your altered items. The combination of glossy areas, grungy areas, and all the varying textures in this piece is a real feast for the senses. I love the way it feels, I love the way it looks, and thanks to the Prima waxes, I even love the way it smells. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Until next time, bye.